don't have good credit, so you can't go to like a bank or anything. And why it's easier to buy a business through owner financing or investor financing. The presenter of this presentation, of course, is me. The author of such books such as From the Gutter to Glory, A Broke Man's Guide to Starting a Business. By me, of course. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Why buy a business? One, with uh, the unemployment rate so high and that uh, more and more people are getting laid off and losing their jobs. Even qualified people are having a hard time finding jobs. People coming straight out of college and because they don't have experience to go with that degree, they're even having a hard time. So part of the reason to buy a business is financial security. And it's a lot easier and cheaper, believe it or not, than to start one. When you start a business, you got to factor in the time that it takes to build, the, the reputation for it, then the advertising, then the, uh, there's a lot that goes into it, and it costs more just to get it to a point where if you was to buy an already existing business, already established, already profitable business, you know, you can buy that, and it won't take as much time as it'll take you to start one, build the reputation up, advertise it, and all those things. So it's a lot easier, a lot cheaper, and then just start one. It's a lot of time consuming. Benefits of owning a business, one, uh, when you do overtime for a company, you're making the owner of that company, you know, kind of rich. You know, he's, he's benefiting off of your, your extra hard work and your long hours. But if you own the company, you're benefiting yourself. So you reap the benefits of your own labor. Second, you determine your schedule. Like if you want to sleep in, Who's going to say you can't sleep in? You decide you want to come in at 10, ain't none of the employees going to say that you can't come in at 10. If you want to say, Beverly, cancel all my appointments, my son's got a game, I'm leaving early. Who's going to stop you? You're the owner. So that's one of the, business, the benefits is that you set the schedule for yourself. You don't even have to go in at all if you don't feel like it because you're the owner. And as the owner, you also don't have to manage the employees if you already have management in place. So it is better to buy a business that already has an established management in place because the only thing that will change is the ownership. Employees will stay the same and the manager will stay the same. So the only person that you have to regularly deal with is the manager and he manages the employees. And if he's already been doing it, you don't want to come in and change anything because all that's going to do is piss the manager off to have you micromanage him. So Basically, all you need to do is have him report to you every so often what's going on and let him continue to do the job that he's already been doing, especially if the business is already profitable. So the last one is you manage, well, it's not the last one, but you manage the manager and he manages the employees. And the last one is you're in control. The best one is you're in control. Next, finally. How do you find a business? Where do you look? I attended a seminar back when I was still rich uh, by this uh, multimillionaire. He's a business mind expert out in California, and he used to do these these thousand dollar seminars. And he recommended, and I met him on the radio interview that I did. And he had me call in, and talk to me when I was just getting started with my first company. But he he recommended this site called Biz by Sale. Right here. And um, that's one of the ones that are frequent. There's like three other ones that are also frequent. But on these websites, you know, you can find businesses for sale by brokers or the sellers. And it, it gives you the information about the business and uh, a lot of detailed documents that you need to ask about or, you know, look for. But the best place to look is the internet. Uh, you can look at the, the library. They have directories of businesses for sale, how many employees what their annual revenues are. And the website has that, have that same information too. There's a lot of directories. There's business by sale, there's businessbroker.net, there's businessesforsale.com, et cetera, et cetera. There's a bunch of them. But there's only three that I frequent, you know, most of the time. Owner
online financing. This is one of two types of financing to buy a business. What's owner financing? Owner financing is a legal transaction in which the borrower obtains financing from the seller and not the banks or any financial companies, lending institution, the traditional way to get a loan. So to simplify, if I was wanting to buy a car from you and I don't have good credit to get a loan, you can finance me the car. Like I'll give you a certain percentage and then you finance the rest. That way there's no credit check involved, there's no banks involved, no nothing else but me and the seller. We cut out the middle man. After you find the business, um, these are things that you look at when you're looking at these websites. And this is the information that's on these websites. You first, you look at the annual revenue because you want to know how much it does every year. Then you want to look at the number of employees that it has because the number of employees determine how, much, how many salaries that there are. Next, you want to look at the cash flow. Cash flow isn't profit. Cash flow is what you have left over after you pay the business expenses. So it's kind of the owner's salary, in other words. You want to look at how many years it's been established. If you're looking at a business for sale and it's only been started like two years ago, then you want to take that into consideration because there's a three to five year failure rate for some businesses. And if it hasn't made it over five years yet, that might be why he's trying to sell it. So you want to look at how long it's been around. If it's only been established three years and they're already selling, you won't look at the annual revenue and the cash flow just to kind of supplement if it's worth taking a chance on. <clears throat> you want to look at what's included in the sale. If it's uh, selling the assets as well, the real estate, the uh, equipment, the inventory, things like that. You want to know if they come with the uh, business. Like some, some liquor stores, a lot of them don't include the inventory. So you will buy a business thinking that you get to just take over with all everything that they still have, and then they don't give you none of the inventory. So you have to use part of your your own funds to replenish your inventory. Now this is this is a website. This is Biz by Sale, and this are things I'm going to show you. The asking price is 165,000. This is for an, a transmission repair shop that I was looking at. The gross income. It's seven hundred thousand a year. The cash flow is a hundred thousand a year. All right, and they left. These are questions. These are things you got to find out as you talk with the seller. Like you set up that lunch meeting with the seller on the golf course or whatever. And these are the questions that you ask. The blanks that you fill in. So, number of employees, and it's established two thousand five. So it's already hit the five year mark. This is the buying process. Remember, I pointed out. The asking price, which was one hundred sixty-five thousand. Owner financing is the standard for that is twenty-five percent. So you put down twenty-five percent as your deposit, and the owner finance the other seventy-five percent. So all you have to have is this much forty-one thousand to take over ownership of a hundred and sixty-five thousand dollar company. The remaining balance is billed towards the cash flow, the money that that's coming in off of the business. And then he knows you're going to make the money because he's selling you the business that's making this much money that he says is making. So if he's telling you that the annual revenue, uh, the cash flow is $100,000, he knows he can, he's going to get a payment because you still have this balance left. So his fee becomes part of the business expense. You can pay it quarterly, monthly, but either way he knows he's getting it because, you know, is coming off. He, he's still part. Well, not part owner, uh, as in you're 100 percent owner of the company, but he, but not 100 percent owner of the cash flow. So he'll get part of his out of the remaining cash flow. Due diligence is, it's like 90 days most of the time, but it's the time that you spend getting all that information. It's the time that you spend evaluating the business to find out if it's making all the money that he says it's making. You find out if there are any debts, uh, if they're about to go. Stuff that he may not have told you in, or you may not find out in the website details. 
So the due diligence is the time that you take to find all this out on your own, going through the books and uh, things of that nature. Yeah. Stuff that he may not have told you right off. But so you take 90 days to find that out before you close. And you can find out something in that that can get you out of the deal, get you out of the contract, like an exit clause. These are some important information to know during the due diligence. You want to you wanna know what the last three filed tax returns are. You want to know what they filed at the end of those three years to kind of give you an idea of what they're generating at the end of the year. You want a profit and loss statement. Accounts receivable and payables. That's how much the business owes and how much they're being owed. You want a business expense list. That's going to include employee salaries, um, utilities, things like that. And you want to know why is he selling? He might say, I'm selling because I want to retire, but he might be selling because he's about to go bankrupt. All right. You look for stability. And all those documents, especially the ones that show numbers, you want to look for stability. Like, uh, let's say this company, in 2006, they, they generated 430000 2007, they generated 440000 2008, 423 2009, 391 Now, there's a range where it never goes over 450 but it doesn't drop too far below 300 so you, you could, that's a, this is good because it gives you, you kind of know that it's still in that range, you know. This is a different company. It's called Dollar Discounts. This is a real company that I was evaluating. All right. Their gross incomes were for 2006, 244, 2007, 181, 2008, 129. Y'all notice, you notice the pattern? Do you notice the pattern here? It keeps dropping. So if the gross income was that low, look at the cash flow for each of these years. 52, 35, 28. Is this a good business to buy? Exactly. No, of course not. Because by then, if it's doing this in the last three years, what do you project that it will do in the next three years? Right. So if it was not good, of course, I'd be like, nah. In conclusion, oh, well, it wasn't supposed to go that fast, but in conclusion, there's a whole lot left to the buying process. You know, I couldn't fit it all in a 10-minute presentation, but uh, for more information on this particular subject, <laughs> Google me on Amazon. <laughs> all right? Any questions? Thank you. Okay. We got to follow that. Time when you take it over companies, the employees don't know that the ownership has changed. Like, let's say you're on a printing company, you got six or seven employees, and they already have a manager. They know the manager because the manager manages the employees. But if you're the owner, you don't even have to go, you can be absentee, hands off, you can go be out playing golf. You know? Think about the big companies like Xerox when it was still up and running. But think of big companies. How often do you ever see the owner of the company? They probably they could know the owner might be a picture of them up saying <laughs> get to work or something like that. <laughs> I worked in a bunch of factories and warehouses and I never knew the owner. Never. And that's my point, you know. So you don't have to be hands on and physically involved with the employees. I wouldn't. Because who, <laughs> who wants to deal with um, an employee coming you to you? Oh my kid's sick and I can't make it to work today and Oh, I gotta go to this PTA. Who, who wants to deal with that? You know, as an owner, I wouldn't. That's why I would have a manager to deal with it himself. And I ain't gotta, I ain't gotta really talk to the employees unless I want to. All right. That concludes my presentation.